The parts cannon is firing today. This right here is my 95 GMC Suburban. I bought this thing with 46,000 miles on it, I think, somewhere around there. And when I first bought it, you know, I had to do the typical tune-up and stuff like that, but it ran really good. And it was my family car. We had just had a baby, and I wanted something big, heavy, and safe to drive her around in. I was determined to keep this thing in really, really good shape. I wanted it to run really well, so you never felt like you were driving a 25-year-old vehicle, especially since my wife would also be driving this by herself. And besides that, I am definitely one of those people who likes to take care of problems way before they ever happen. I try to anticipate a problem happening, you know, common wear items, common failure points of these engines, and then take care of the problem before it becomes a problem. And, well, yes, over the course of working on this truck on this channel, I have seen those odd comments that say something to the effect of, wow, he's shooting the parts cannon again. You see, in my eyes, if there's something wrong with this engine, something is causing it to run rough or whatever, and I kind of sort of know what the problem is, I kind of know where it's coming from, and those parts that I think are at fault are, let's say, 25 years old or more, I'm not losing anything by replacing those parts, even if they aren't at fault. In that case, not only do I now have brand new parts, but I know that they're not gonna fail. I know that that's not the issue. So while it is a process of elimination sometimes, it's also somewhat purposefully preventative maintenance. And that's precisely why I don't mind replacing parts that are original to the truck, even if they're not bad. Here's a good example. Here's my upper radiator hose. This thing is brand new and it is original equipment AC Delco. And you can see my lower radiator hose right there, which is also brand new original equipment AC Delco. So I didn't replace those hoses because they were cracked or anything like that. I replaced those hoses because they were 25 years old. They actually felt fine. They didn't seem like they had an issue at all, but they're cheap for me to get. I can buy this stuff on Amazon cheaper than the dealership can buy it at cost. And if I do the work myself, not only am I getting new parts at a greatly reduced price, because I'm doing the work myself, but I'm also gaining valuable knowledge and experience working on my truck. It's a win-win. And then there's those times, like in the case of my ignition coil, I went to go replace that thing and realized that the electrode was actually broken off inside of the coil. I had been driving around with my coil like that for who knows how long, dealing with random misfires and things like that. Nothing too serious to where I felt like my engine was gonna blow up, but just something annoying. Then one random day, I decided to swap that thing out as part of my general tune-up, and lo and behold, the thing is actually broken, and I didn't even really know it was. So I think there is a very strong case for taking out that parts cannon and firing it off a few times. If you plan on keeping your older vehicle and you want it to run right, and you want to preventatively take care of potential problems, why not replace those easy to access, easy to get to parts, those common failure points? Why not? Especially when we can buy these parts on Amazon these days for incredibly cheap and do the work ourselves. We are saving a boatload of money that way. And the ultimate goal and benefit here is that your car or truck will thank you for it. It will run really good hopefully. Today on this 95 Suburban, I'm going to replace the map sensor. There's not necessarily anything wrong with the current one that's on there, really, that I know of. The truck runs and idles really, really smoothly, and that's partly because I just fixed a problem that I didn't even really know was a problem. My EGR valve. This truck doesn't have an electronic EGR valve, it is a vacuum-powered EGR valve. I checked it for proper operation not too long ago, let's call it six months ago, and it was working fine. Then, out of complete curiosity, I go to check it again, and lo and behold, it's not holding a vacuum. So that clued me in onto probably exactly why my truck was idling a little rough, and every once in a blue moon, I would see my check engine light come on and then go off. So I bought an EGR valve and replaced it, and the truck idles really well. But if you've been following my channel, you know I cannot leave well enough alone. There's that little sensor called the MAP sensor, or the Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor, that kind of also deals a lot with idle and starting and all that stuff. And because I can pick up that original equipment part on Amazon for extremely cheap, I'm gonna go ahead and replace it today to further the case for a very smooth idle. To get to that MAP sensor, I'm gonna remove this air filter housing. And there is the map sensor. Can you see it? Okay, I'll give you a little help. 
it's that guy right there. And here is the new map sensor, and you can see it looks pretty much identical to the old one. Looking at the bottom here, you can see there is an electrical connection as well as a vacuum connection. And I almost forgot, you definitely want to disconnect the negative side of the battery anytime you do any sort of work to your vehicle. In this case, it'll help this truck's computer to kind of reset, so that way when I put everything back together, put the battery back together, take it out on a drive, it'll kind of like relearn everything, like the new sensor. Make sense? Okay, with this map sensor, we have this electrical connector here and this vacuum hose here. And I'm gonna try ever so slightly to remove this electrical connector without breaking it because this is located right on top of the engine. These tend to get really brittle. So I'm gonna try very, very slightly to remove this, but I am anticipating it breaking, which is kind of gonna irritate me a little bit. And what do you know, it did break, but I did say I anticipated that. So maybe I can glue it back together. I don't know, we'll have to see, but I'll keep this handy. You can see just where that piece broke off. These things get extremely brittle. And here is that vacuum line. It does take a little coercion, but it does come off. All right, and here is that original map sensor. And you can see I did take off the bracket that holds the map sensor on. And that was done just by removing this seven millimeter screw. Well, I finally got this thing apart. And I gotta tell you, it was a little bit of a trick doing it. If you look at this bracket here, you can kind of get a sense for how this thing works. Not only is there a clip here on the end, but there's these two clips here. And you can see the holes here that basically slide directly onto those clips. If I were to sandwich this together real tight, these clips here on the end would completely retain this map sensor. So I have my new one here and I'll go ahead and slide it over the top, fit it into place. There we go, there's one side. So that thing is on there and it's tight. Now I'll reattach everything with this seven millimeter screw. All right, the plastic bracket that holds the actual map sensor has a couple tabs that go into this metal bracket that basically locates it. And now I can hand start this screw back here. All right, so everything is nice and tight. All I have to do is plug in the electrical connector here. And of course this vacuum hose. Here's the moment of truth. Everything is put back together. The battery's hooked back up. I'm gonna start it up and hope that everything runs good. Here we go. A Little bit hard starting, but that's to be expected. Seems to be idling pretty good though. And of course, with the battery being unhooked for the length of time that it was, the computer's probably completely reset. At this point, the engine and the computer kind of have to work together to relearn everything, including that new sensor that I just put in. So I am gonna take it out on the road and let everything come up to operating temperature, but so far, the truck is idling really good. All right, well, I guess the proof is in the pudding. I just took this thing out on the freeway, all through some neighborhood streets, and it's idling just fine. It's no better and no worse than it was before but it's idling good. This truck idles really good for a truck being, what is it, over 25 years old now. So I'm happy. I'm happy to know that that sensor, regardless of whether the old one was malfunctioning or not, is now replaced and brand new. I don't have to worry about that at all or think in the back of my mind that that thing is malfunctioning in any way. I was able to do the work myself, which saved me a boatload of money, and I was able to buy the part, the original equipment, AC Delco part on Amazon, which is probably a heck of a lot less than I could have bought it anywhere else. Well, I think that concludes this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. I'm Jimmy, the channel is One Road, and I will see you in the next one.